the AMD K62 Plus is an interesting processor, kind of a hybrid with features from old and new processors that make it extremely useful for retro PC gamers. Especially if you're interested in building a hybrid PC for DOS as well as Windows 98. To better understand this processor, we have to go back in time a little bit and take a look what came before. Let's have a look at the good old 386. Here we have a typical 386 motherboard with an AMD 386 processor running at 40 MHz and also 4 MB of RAM. Now when the CPU accesses the RAM, this happens very slowly, so in order to speed things up you usually find sockets for cache chips on most 386 motherboards. Cache is faster than RAM and stores frequently used data, which basically makes everything run faster. Next we got the 486, and the 486 actually has cache inside the processor. Here we've got the Intel 486DX33, which comes with 8KB of internal cache. To avoid confusion with the cache chips on the motherboard, the cache inside the processor was called level 1 cache, and the cache on the motherboard was called level 2 cache. The same was true for the Socket 7 platform. Here we got our typical Super Socket 7 motherboard. The processor is an Intel Pentium MMX233, which has 32 kilobytes of level 1 cache, and on the motherboard we have 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Now the AMD K62 Plus changes all of that. The chip comes with 64 kilobytes of level 1 cache, however, it also has 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache on the CPU. And it's those 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache that give the AMD K62 Plus a performance boost. The cache on the motherboard simply becomes level 3 cache. Now you can turn off caches in the BIOS which slows everything down. Not a feature that anyone wanted, but now for the purpose of playing old games, this is one key feature of the Socket 7 platform. But there's more, the K62 Plus is actually a mobile processor. The AMD Power Now technology can dynamically lower voltage as well as the multiplier to increase battery life. There are tools for DOS and Windows that let you change the multiplier on the fly. So this brings us to today's video and we are checking out the AMD K62 Plus 550. In this video we will go over the specifications of the processor, have a look at the test systems, there are benchmarks comparing this CPU against the range of Pentium 2 and Pentium 3 processors as well as the regular AMD K62 500. We will check out PowerDraw, how disabling caches can be used to play older games, software to change the multiplayer on the fly, and there's a bit of discussion on suitable motherboards as well as pricing. Let's quickly go over the specifications of the processor. I wasn't able to find 100% what the price and release date was, however, I found an article on Tom's Hardware from June of 2000 and it stated a price of $100. The processor has a front side bus of 100 megahertz. We've got a 5.5x multiplier that you usually set through dip switches or jumpers on the motherboard, which gives you a final clock speed of 550 megahertz. The processor was manufactured in the smaller 180 nanometer processor, which means it consumes less power and can be clocked higher. The core voltage is 2 volts and we've got 64 kilobytes of level 1 and 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache. We have two systems used in this video. For the Socket 7 we've got a Gigabyte GA5AX motherboard, 128 megs of RAM, a Quadro 2 video card, a Turtle Beach Santa Cruz sound card, 16 gigabyte storage with an SD card and also an ID optical drive. For the Slot 1 system we've got an ABIT BH6 motherboard, 256 meg of RAM and everything else is the same as for the Socket 7 platform. The operating system is Windows 98 SE. Ok guys, I think it's time to put the CPU on the test bench and see what it can do.
So look at that, the 128 kilobytes of cache really make a difference. The K62 Plus is pretty decent, we're getting a nice boost compared to the regular K62. DOS high resolution performance is still pretty weak, but this could just be an issue with the chipset or with this motherboard. Further testing would be needed to really get to the bottom of this. There are actually quite a lot of tools for the K62 Plus processor. I'm just going to show you two that I like to use. The first one is for DOS and it's set mul and the way it works you just type in set mul followed by whatever multiplier you want so if we want a 5.5x multiplier here we go the processor now runs at 550 megahertz we can change that so if i have a multiplier of 2.0 i'll just type in 2.0 and now my cpu runs at 200 megahertz and under Windows, I like to use K6 speed. So here we can see the K62 Plus running at 550 megahertz. So we're just gonna run this tool. And first it's gonna ask us what is the maximum multiplier. So that just uh, protects you from overshooting the clock speed. So 5.5x and we can see the clock speed here. And you just press, uh, press slower until you see that number change. So let's go down to 200 there you go and then we we'll just go exit and that should be locked in and here we just got to do a quick refresh and we have 200 megahertz clock speed let's have a quick look at using caches to slow down the computer so this is the gigabyte ga5 ax and we are in the bias and if you go to the bias features setup page here we have two options for the caches. So rather than referring to level one, level two or level three cache, Gigabyte just named it internal and external cache. So external cache is the cache on the motherboard, whereas the internal cache will toggle the level one and the level two cache on the K62 plus processor. Now, if you disable both caches, you will basically get the equivalent performance of a 386. So games such as Wing Commander or Test Drive 3 will become playable. If you want to have the speed of a 486, so uh, 386 uh, being a little bit too slow, you can turn on the external cache, but leave the internal cache disabled. Let's talk about prices. On eBay, there are a ton of listings for the regular K62. So you might have to spend a little bit of time sifting through the listings to find a K62 Plus. They usually sell for a higher price as well, but with a bit of patience and looking around, it shouldn't be too difficult finding one at a decent price. Now, all of this sounds great, but there is a catch, unfortunately, and that is finding a decent motherboard that supports the K62 Plus processor. Many boards do this officially, but others rely on a modified BIOS. Especially if you're after a modern ATX SuperSocket 7 motherboard, you will definitely need to spend quite a bit because these motherboards are extremely sought after and supply is pretty limited. Talking about prices, I remember playing around with the Socket 7 platform when most retro PC gamers were heavily into building high performance 486 machines. Back then, people didn't see the Socket 7 as particularly interesting. Prices were low and nobody really cared. And that was the time when I got most of my motherboards. So this just shows you that you shouldn't discount any alternatives as demand, supply and prices can quickly change. So let's summarize the K62 Plus. It is a very interesting processor which performs much better than your regular K62 thanks to the 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache which are directly on the processor. It is also very flexible, having a multiplier that can be changed on the fly with software in DOS and Windows and compared to the Slot 1 platform, it is much better at running old games that are speed sensitive. Prices and availability could be better, especially finding a decent SuperSocket 7 motherboard could be quite difficult and expensive. Most suitable is this processor for a hybrid build that runs DOS games as well as early Windows 3D games. Later Windows 3D games do run and you could argue that they are playable, but I think you're better off with a fast Pentium 3 for late Windows 3D games. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, why not subscribe to my channel and get updates for new videos. Click the like or the dislike button, share the video with your friends, and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you soon with another video.